What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for World on Fire on Donny Vermillion. Brian, let's hear the mutation. Donny Vermillion, the best map in the game, is where we have to gather 20 Xenon crystals and return them to the stabilizer in the middle of our base. The crystals appear once lava recedes from the low ground. But we need to flee to the high ground while the lava is up. Missiles fly in from the edge of the map and hit your buildings if you don't shoot them down. Nukes hit close to your guys, and a purifier beam keeps chasing your army around. I like the Donny thing. Donny Vermillion. Donny Ver. Donny. Dot. Dot. Donny. Donny Ver. Donny Vermillion. Donny. Dot. 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 Donny Ver. Donny Vermillion. Donny. Dot. Donny Vermillion. Nice. Anyway, we have two two. The call with us today. Two two. How are you? Good. Great. So, how do we rank the commanders this week? So for this week, the biggest. Well, there are actually several big ones. <laughs> the going nuclear makes the regular objective much more difficult. And on top of that, Missile Command, for hit scan commanders like Rainer and Manx, they won't have that much trouble. But for, ev for others, they will have an extra task to deal with when the nukes come. So it's uh, a lot of multitasking. And regardless of the tier, if you're not that good with multitasking, it might be difficult for you. A little more than what the commander's rank is. That's actually fair. I also had a similar consideration. It had three considerations here. So again, a point system, three points. If you're good at the map itself, meaning you have good mobility and a way to get your workers to the crystals fast, you get a point. If not, you don't. If you are good at shooting down the missiles and the nuke missile, you get another point. If you don't, you don't get a point. If you're not, you don't get a point. And finally, if you are good at either dodging the nukes or you don't care about the nukes, you get a third point. Otherwise, you don't get a point. So, uh, three points is A, two points is B, one point is C, no points is D. And if you're really good, you get S tier. So, let's begin. Abathur, where do we have him? For Abathur, he, he has a slow start because farming biomass is very difficult when there are nukes going around. Fortunately, you don't need a fast brutalist. You can even wait until like the six minute wave before you actually need one. You don't have to even leave your base. Uh, later on, when nukes come, you use your brutalist. But because they are, uh, because like uh, you have to pay attention to where the nukes are, you have to f focus. Otherwise, you just patrol your brutalists like around your base, which also works, and just use your leviathans and every everything else. But it's a lot of extra work for getting the crystals. He does have dropper overlords, so Zerg commanders can put their drones in an overlord to give them an extra hit, which is nice. Omega worms are or Nidus worms are too slow, so don't you, those don't really work. I put Abathur in B. Okay, uh, I had Abathur in B, but I also was considering A because I took away a half point for. I believe it was Missile Command, not going nuclear, it was actually Missile Command because he does have a good way of shooting down the nuke missiles, but his anti-regular missiles is just kind of out healing it using men. And if you're not on top of that, you're, you kinda, it can kind of lose some buildings and stuff. So I took away half a point. So he's between A and B. So I'm fine with either, but you said B, so let's go with B. Prestige wise, I think no prestige is fine here. You can use a second prestige yeah. if you want, but no prestige is also fine. So, B it is. Alak for me is A. He checks off all the bosses. He has destroyers, which you can patrol. They don't care about the point defense drones that the enemy will send later on. The, you can just have Alarak, the mothership, and, and a few supplicants with Alarak to push across the map. And you don't need to push into bases. Just those camps where they spawn crystals. And then just run your probe in, then get out. And if you're in a tough spot, you can just always teleport away with your mothership. And speaking of teleport away, he, he can also have good mobility on the map. For example, when the attack waves come in different directions. And if, if you can't get there, you can overcharge your allies' building or your own building. So he's an A for me. I put him in B because his missile command is good. Everything else, he's like, every, he's like the other commanders. He has to kind of care about his army because one... One wrong move and you're gone. So you lose everything. And that's not going to be very good for... Uh, yeah. 
So uh, you also can't F2 because that's true. then you move your patrolling destroyers away. So you have to, if you're not used to it, that's that's on that's like uh, another thing you have to keep in mind. So yeah, dodging the enemy sometimes can be difficult as well when the nukes are around. So he's all right. I think he does fine. But you need to be good with the commander, like moving mobile um, and reinforcing his army. Unless you just like make destroyers, reinforcing is also kind of hard because you don't want to get nuked. That's true. So you I can, put him in B. but you can kind of just warp in your destroyers from the mothership, right? Besides destroyers, then mm. besides destroyers, you're gonna. I guess that's it's true. gonna be hard to reinforce other things. What I do for that is just to rally, rally the guy straight to Alara. I would rather lose a Wrathwalker to a stray nuke than lose my entire army. If I get reinforcements, great. If not, it's fine. Alara can probably still do it. Uh, I'm okay with B, but I would rather use a star since it it is an it is a skill check if you can keep the entire game without F twoing your destroyers and if you can keep looking at your army when you need to. But I do I do agree that you you can lose you can lose your or, your entire army if you're not looking at the right at the right at the right moment. So I'm okay with A or B. I would personally put him in A star, but. Uh, if you're gonna hit on B, I'm okay with B. I I think Al Abathur is better than Alarak. You think Al Abathur Abathur's can? Better? Because Alarak, uh, Abathur, Leviathans don't die to nukes, and um, if you use P2, your Ravagers and Roaches can deep tunnel, so you can just appear on the battlefield and get out when you need to most of the time. My main consideration here is that Abathur doesn't really have a great response to regular nu to regular missiles, or other than healing it. He has spores, and Those aren't he has that a lot of minerals. Great. So, so you just spam spores in the in the dead spaces? No, just around your base. They'll shoot down whatever mm. doesn't have a PDD. But it's like, I mean, he he floats minerals anyways. So he has a lot. He's not going to use the minerals on roaches because roaches aren't good without biomass. So he might as well just make evolution chambers or spores. I don't know about that, but if you say so, let's put him in. Let's put him in B. Arcturus, what do you have him? So he is good. Uh, he has ESOs, although the center of the map gets hit by nukes and the purifier beam. So it's actually extremely small. So it might be harder to build a lot of ESOs than usual. Uh, the good thing is that he can drop bunkers directly onto the crystals once you have cleared the fog of war there like at least once and you can kind of just like steal the crystals so you don't have to walk workers across the map that's uh, true you can if you use p3 you can have like a small army and it and since it's a small army they probably uh they can dodge nukes pretty easily if they don't they'll kill a lot of stuff on their way out and uh, i put manx in a uh same things as he said but I put Arcturus in S because he can also repair, and he can just do as he said inhumane stuff. I think yeah, I think he is S as long as he don't build like too far from the mineral lines. You should have safe spots for enough nukes. My 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 plan here, if I were to play Arcturus, is to just put the Earth Splitters near my base. Like just don't spam them. Just have enough of them to give you vision for your bunker drops, your top bars. And your troopers. That's how I would do this. I think that's S, but uh, again, if it's not the you know, it's not S. So if you say it's A, then I guess we, I guess A is also fine. A is not bad. Prestige-wise, which one do you go for? One or three. One or three. Same. I would personally lean toward three because it gives you an extra top bar, and I really would rather not lean to Earth Splitters because they don't have unlimited range. They can hit most of the map, but not all the map. And as T2 said, they can get hit if you build it too far away from the base. So, yeah, I, I am leaning toward the third one. Uh, but tier-wise, I'm okay with A. I had an S, but I'm okay with A. Let's put him in A. Artanis, for me, he does not have a great response to missiles. He can have cadence. He can have archons. Not great, from my experience. He doesn't have a great response to 
nukes, the, the random nukes, because his army's bulky, if you have an army, and you have to push, it, 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 his dragoons are not great for dodging and stuff. And you kind of need a ground force to clear out buildings and anti-ground stuff, th like hybrids, that just take a lot of hits. And he does not, he does not have great mobility. He can, have, he can warp in stuff if he's not yet maxed out, but when, you, when your static army has to move from point A to point B on Dawn Vermilion and the lava is up, you might not get there. I also have to give a special consideration. He he also is not very great against purified beam, since his dragoons has have to walk everywhere. So I actually have him in D. <laughs> not great. I don't I don't think he checks any boxes for me. Maybe maybe a half point for the map itself because he can warp and stuff if you're not yet maxed out. What do you think? So uh, his best anti missiles. Uh, Anti-nuke is Archons. You patrol Archons and you storm the nukes. So you'll hit out hit all missiles. Uh, PDDs will stop his like dragoons as well in combat. You won't stop all of them, but like you do a little less damage than you might because of random missiles flying by. Uh, if you're using if you're using P3, you don't have Guardian Shell. You you'll fight the waves and clear the areas more easily, but you need to be more careful with your army. If you're using anything that's not, uh, you can use orbital strike on the nukes, but it's hard to aim on the nukes. It is so it's really bad. And uh, his army, he needs like a unless you're using P three, he needs a fairly big army to push, especially like when you're pushing and an attack wave comes. You can summon stuff right away, I guess, but uh, depends on your cooldown management. It's kind of hard to manage all those things and at the same time so i put him in d as well all right the animus d there we go speaking of d d haka where do you have him contrary to popular belief he's actually not terrible against missiles he's just not good in the early game but against nukes he's actually very good because his greater primal worms can kill the nukes with its ability with the, the laser thing ability whatever it is so like once you get to the 15 minute mark, you should have your stuff, your your base established and stuff. And you pretty much only need pack leaders on the field. So pack leaders to clear stuff and um, you, your pack leaders don't, don't die to nukes. So you kind of just focus on the, the drones that are collecting crystals and your pack leaders can just uh, do whatever they want, attack, move in a direction. But because of the early game, like if you're not careful, you could actually lose your primal warden and you're set back like really, far. really far. Or your gas that kind of that sucks a lot. I put him in C. I actually have him in B. I took away a point for the missiles, as you said, but I don't think he has a problem with going nuclear because he can still do the the lo the primal the primal uh locust thingy the bailing thingy. Uh, but the, the, those can get intercepted by missiles, and they're basically scourge. But you think they, they and they can get intercepted. But even then, pack leaders are fine. They can just push on their own. So I don't think he has a problem against going nuclear. He also doesn't have a problem against the map itself, because again, primal or pack leaders are pretty good. So he only lose a point on on the missile command for me. So that's why I put him in B. So what do you think about that? <laughs> the creeper host strat doesn't work because. They're gonna shoot creepers at random times due to the missiles coming at random times. So you're not really gonna get a chance to shoot a volley unless you like turn off autocast on a few. Uh, but you need you pretty much need your whole army defending against missiles. Otherwise, you will lose stuff. Yeah, and, that's that's uh, true. But even still, even if your entire army is just anti nukes, you can you, you can still push with just the pack eaters. And you'll do fine. Yes, yeah. So that's why I put him in C. He's he's fine. The people in B and higher, they either don't have to deal with the missiles. They have no problem. They have little problem missile command, and they can deal with the map or something. That's kind so, of A for me already. But I guess I guess we can just move everyone to tier lower in my list. Um, okay, if if that's how you if that's how you put it, then let's go by yours, uh, your your standard. Let's put Doc and C.
Maybe 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 we should like count missile command as two points because it's like the biggest thing here. Eh, it's fine. Okay, the Hawkeye in C. Oh. What? Oh yeah, it's because for missile command, if you get nuked, you, if you lose a lot of workers, it's actually really hard to come back because you have fewer buildings and workers to get the money to come back. So unless you're Rainer, at any point you get, at any point you get nuked, you're like really far behind. Yeah, imagine getting nuked in the game. Uh, anyway, Phoenix for me is B. I took away a point for the missile command thing. It doesn't really have a great response to missiles. Aside from maybe conservators. Carriers, I think, were the consensus the last time we did this tier list. I would still think conservators are faster because you can warp them in. But not fantastic against nukes. Uh, that's why I put him in B. He's, got, he's great against the map. Great against pure fire beam. Great against going nuclear. Well, not great. He's fine against going nuclear. But yes, the missile command thing really brings him down to B. What do you think? So his best anti-missiles is carriers and even P2 carriers because they don't you don't need to deal a lot of damage. You just need a lot of things shooting. Yes. So P2 and you have like you you have a lot more carriers than you than you usually do. So your army is going to be a lot smaller. Although you still have the regular champion stuff, but you'll have like a lot fewer shells. And um he has to babysit his probes across the map because he doesn't really have another way. He can teleport back to base. So, like once you get rid of once you get rid of um, the enemies at, at crystals, you can just teleport back to base and then focus on your probes, which makes things easier. Uh, I put Phoenix in B. So we had the same ranking after all. Let's put him in B. Prestige wise, you want the second one here, right? Second one. All right. Han and Horner, where do you have them? Han Horner is Terran, so that's good. That's about it. <laughs> uh, Terran, so uh, they're Terran, which means they can repair, but Han and Horner does not have good hit scan against nukes. So Han and Horner's best defense against nukes is you fly a group of Reapers and manually attack them, which takes yeah. away your attention elsewhere. Yeah. So this is... Uh, one of the few times where I think P3 is actually not bad, although you need to ex you need to expand. But P3 is not gonna be bad. I don't think it's necessarily good, but like being able to shoot things from your base is really nice. Although if the enemy has air units, you'll need some battle cruisers or something to assist them. Uh, <clears throat> so um, fighting missiles is actually kind of annoying, but you can repair at least for the first 15 minutes. And then your army, I guess, uh, army's not that good. Um, yeah, I put them in B, maybe C. I had Han and Honor in B. I thought, I think that the, the nukes are the only problem here. I, I actually took away half point. For regular missiles, they can just repair, which is good. Purifier beam, they can just outrun it. Uh, the map, they can just trade. Go nuclear, they can just dodge. Reapers are fast. They ha they're not Dragoons. So I think actually B is fine for a hot and I would still use chaotic power couple because I don't think it changes a lot other than having to repair I guess the missiles and chase the nuke missiles. That's about it, I think. Uh, oh yeah. you know, that's when you chase the nukes, you're not looking at your army. So if your army's out in the field and you're chasing a nuke, you might get hit by going nuclear nuke. That's true. You that's might get hit by another nuke. So they don't have an auto. They don't have a good auto nuke killer, which makes them a lot worse than those that have it. Maybe I should put two points in the, in the go nuclear thing, but you know the list is already done. Let's just go with it. Uh, either way, uh, we both we both ended up in B. My my recommendation is first prestige. Yours is third, which I think is also fine. I'm just concerned about point defense drones because they do intercept the the airstrike attacks. And those take a whole minute, so essentially you lose a whole minute of cooldown by just having a point by just aim on having a point defense drone nearby. That's really sad. But anyway, but uh, be anyway. Uh, Carax for me S because he has defense against missiles. He can just use orbital strike against the enemies. He can fly a mirage around, so he can easily dodge the. 
the nukes. Oh, I meant to say sword lance. Sword, you can use sword lance against the enemies. Or blood sweat against some, some clumped up stuff or some static defense so you can pr so your probe can sneak in. Collect the the xenon crystal, you also get a unity barrier. So in case you get hit by a nuke, you survive. And in case your ally gets hit with a nuke, he also survives. So you, you, you help your ally. And the other one is the map itself. Orbital Strike and Sword Lance, pretty good at defending anywhere where the enemy has to hit. Also, Static Defense, also pretty good at the map. That's why it's S for me. He, his Unity Barrier is one of the best things because he gets an extra hit in case you don't always get hit, but if you do, you still continue moving. So that's really good. And his top bar takes care of everything. And if you want to make carriers fine, I think you just need a bunch of Mirages so that they stay alive so you can have vision for the Spear of a Doom. I put him in S. All right. Uh, Prestige-wise, I would recommend the third one here so you have a lot of solar to go around. Yeah. Kerrigan, where do you have him? So Kerrigan does not have a good auto-nuke killer. Um, her usual plan is to mass Omega Worms, which Omega Worms are nice. Kerrigan can pretty much hero solo this one. Yeah. So the, the, the hard part is that you need to keep jumping around everywhere to fight the nukes and get healed, and it's very, very busy. Spores don't do anything later on, so you have to pretty much be everywhere. And Mac, you have to like make more stuff, spend your money, and then get your dudes in and out of the worms. Uh, you can at least get go to like directly to the to the sites. Uh, since she's by herself though, any like heavy air comp might focus her down. Oh that's true. Sucks. That means like you can you can make like ultras or some hydras to join you, but uh yeah. I put her in B because she's really busy. I also put her in B actually. I put, I took away a point for going nuclear or not going nuclear for missile command because she does have to take care of the missile the missiles on her own. For the smaller missiles, my solution is just to spam Omega Orbs in dead spaces so that they target those things instead of her actual buildings. And you know, a few spores around her mineral line and other and her actual buildings are also helpful in shooting down the missile. It's just, you know, dividing and then shooting them down is how I would deal with it. And with the, for the nuke missile, yeah, just just focus it down. Just have to run to it. And ideally you would have Omega Orbs everywhere where you need to be. But that's true. I agree with B. Prestige-wise, I think the Zap's pretty good because you can. It's your kind of crowd control. It's also useful against air. Like if you have, if you're afraid of flies, you can use a bug. You can use a bug zapper. That'll work fine. Third one is also, I think, pretty good. So you have better assimilation aura, so you get more money. But you have less of a response against stuff like Zerg and uh, yeah, Zerg and stuff. So. I think second or third are fine. What do you think? I think any prestige is any except P1 the first one is usable just because. What? But you use a completely different strat, so ah, I don't recommend it. Hydralisks. You, you use machine gun hydralisks. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I would still use Omega Worms. Omega Worms are life. Omega Worms are better for yeah. this map, especially. Especially this map because it can just teleport your worker straight to the Xenon Crystal. Anyway. We both agree with Kerrigan B. Let's move on. Nova for me is A. She has repair. And she can just shoot down the nuke missiles using her marines. For the map itself, she can just go third prestige and just use sabotage drones and nukes to clear bases. Liberators to finish off the buildings, I guess. You can do that. For the crystal itself, you can I guess you can airlift if you need it. But I, I don't think you need to. Defensive drone helps keep Nova alive, also against uh, also her units, I guess. The airstrike and airlift are both useful for surprise attack waves in different directions. So that's all the check box. That's all the boxes for me. That's A. What do you think? So for Nova, her only real problem is the nukes. So you use the best the best anti nuke. Ability is the Raven Seeker missile, but you have to be able to click on the nukes. Sometimes it's tricky. I get uh, it. Since Nova has sabotage drone like P3, you can just go around and kill everything, and whatever's not dead, you airstrike it. 
the air units for airstrike, the buildings you can nuke or sabotage drone. There aren't actually many places to use the nuke, so you can like nuke the attack waves too. Uh, yeah, and if you're if uh, if you are moving SCVs towards the crystals and Nova dies to a nuke, you can just bring her back right away. So you can just kind of focus only on the SCVs going towards the crystals af after you've cleared the area. That's true. Uh, I put her in A. I okay, put her in a. we agree. Prestige wise, we want the third one because we want Nova to just clear on her own. So it's pretty good. Rainer, where do we have him? Rainer, uh, he's good against Missile Command. That's about it. <laughs> so that's it, unfortunately. Uh, his because if you're using P3, like uh, it's the usual BCs. BCs are slow. It takes a while to get going. And BCs, if you if you teleport and like a nuke's coming, can't dodge it. That kind of sucks. You do have afterburners, so that helps dodge some things sometimes. But uh, yeah, before you get enough BCs, it's just kind of uh, slow. Fortunately, this map is also kind of slow, so that's good. You will have to babysit your your workers, and, but at least you don't need to babysit your base against nukes. So I put Rainer in B, though. I actually had Rainer in A. I think he's fine. I would use infantry instead of battle cruisers here because they have hit scan, so they don't even care about point defense drones at all. And you can just push against the bases normally. And like I said earlier, you don't actually have to push against the bases, just those areas where they have crystals. Just shoot down things defending and then sneak your probe in and then sneak your probe out. Then defense wise, you can always use your you can always use your bunkers to hold out until the rest of your infantry arrives. And early missiles you can just repair. Later missiles you have your infantry. I actually think he's A. I think he check he checks off all the boxes. He is slightly weak against some comps, which is which is an argument for B comp dependency. But otherwise, I guess be theaters and the way the map is laid out, I think he's fine. On second thought, I kind of get it. Like, if you get nuked and you're, you're P0, you can just make another army. Right. So, yeah, it's not a big deal if you get nuked. Well, so... kind of, but you can dodge easily. I mean, they're not Dragoons, they're Marines. You can stim them out. Uh, yeah, uh, Purifier Beam on ramps kind of sucks, though. That's true. So... Purifier Beam on ramps kind of sucks. <laughs> It's hard to push. That's true. That's uh, another yeah. good. That's another good point. So. Uh, Why? Okay. Yeah. But not having to worry at all about missile command is a very big. It's plus. huge. Plus, you can make your ally not not have to worry about missile command. It's just yeah, huge. So well, if you do that, then you're not doing objective. But sure. Like you're I mean, spending all your money defending both bases. I mean, that's not what Which, I meant. You can have just a few bunkers, and that'll do the job. Honestly, and repair, that'll do the job. Uh, but yeah, yeah uh, but that slows your own army down. I mean, if you, if you want, if that's you think fair. that's worth it, that's fine. But I'm just saying, like, it slows yourself down if you if your ally can't defend at all and you have to defend for them. That's fair. So anyway, um, are you okay with A or are you just taking with yeah. B? No, A is fine. Plus, all right. because they're in bunkers, you can still have two. Exactly. <laughs> Let's put Raider in A. Uh, Stet boy, I have him in A also. He he can repair against early missile missiles. He can use Igor against the nukes later on. He has Zerglings which don't care about nukes. He has Stet zone, so he can make your workers go even faster to and from the crystals. Super Gary is still strong. He can solo push on his own. You can go Infestors. You can go Ultralis. You can go Zerglings. You can go whichever unit you want. They're fine. Again, PFRB might be annoying if they camp the ramps, but Super Gary doesn't care about ramps. He just flies over the the cliffs. And going nuclear, again, you can just use Zerglings. You can have Infestors. You don't necessarily have to have a babysitting army, but if you want to, it's not that bad either. I actually had Stet Boy in A. What do you think? So... Statman's only he's really good on this map because of stat zones. The bad thing about him for this mutation is the nukes from the nukes from the going from missile command. So what his his most reliable way of taking out nukes is like Novas, except you use the Brew Lords. 
So you use a Yamato on the uh, use the Yamato on the nukes, and then you'll take care of them. So it's more reliable than Egorps because you don't have to be in position. You just keep like three, four brute lords at each base to make sure you have enough, and then you just use Lings plus Gary on the map. So I put them in an A. Mm, turns out we end up in the same spot. Okay, A is fine for me. Also, pressed each twice with the second one. You need you need the super powerful Gary to push on his own. Stukov, where do you have him? Stukov, uh, he he's like the first one who we bring this up. He sucks against the purifier beam, especially when it's stuck on a ramp. Hmm. So when the purifier beam is stuck on the ramp, his if you're using P3, it's his stuff is gonna die. So I actually think you should use P1. You should use P1, and you can still make bunkers. You can still make Your bunkers. bunkers will defend against the, the missile command stuff and use diamondbacks and tanks. Diamondbacks are much better and much more mobile. And um, yeah, so I put Stukov in A. Hmm. I put Stukov in S because if you have a purifier beam camping a ramp, I'll just send my investor to a different spot to draw the purifier beam away. And besides, you can also you still use an overlord to trap the beam, to draw it away from the ramp so that your the rest of your guys can come in. But again, not re not that reliable because you can still get hit by a nuke, the regular, the go nuclear nuke. Uh, the dial back is also a, a really good strategy. I'm okay with, I'm okay with A. I would rather have an S because he's just, he just shoots down everything. <laughs> and if I have a Stuka Vela, I generally don't have to worry about anything, but I, I can see your point. A is fine. I personally still have an S, but not Yamis, therefore not S. Let's put him in A. Swan, he is S for me. He has static defense, take care of all the missiles and the attack waves. He has concentrated beam and pulse cannon if you want that. You can also get the the splash damage laser if you want that. I'd rather have the top barb for the big waves. And you have rates, they, they dodge by default. And... You can just, if you're afraid of your SCV style, you can just always teleport them in via Hercules. You have they have to run back manually though. That's kind of that kind of sucks. Against the the missiles, you can point your laser at it, make it go bye bye, or you can just rely on your missile turrets, which also do just fine. Uh, also against the nukes, I think. I think the missile the the turrets can do again. can do fine against nukes if you have enough of them. And that's about it. I don't think I don't see here I don't see any problems for Stu the first one. I have an S. Yeah, Swan, he he has everything against missile command. Uh purifier beam doesn't matter to him. Going nuclear, his wraiths are fast, and then you can teleport a Herc to the crystals directly. So you you're like half the trip is like instant. Yes. It's just free. Half the trip. That's already more than many commanders. So yeah, I think S makes sense. Okay. Swan and S. Uh, did you use the first prestige or second prestige or no prestige? I don't remember, but... I think... I, I, I like the second one here because I like top bars. I used P1 when I added Doomsday Report on top of this because <laughs> there are props, but... Uh... All right. But that's S regardless. Tychus, where do you have him? Tychus, for me... Uh... You only need Tychus on the field. You don't need anyone else. Everyone else can be at home shooting missiles exactly. and uh, giving him the buff, giving giving Tychus the buff. And um, you can, on, since you don't use your outlaws for much, oh, Nux, you might have to buy his gear because he'll defend your natural. But then like everyone else, you just kind of sit at home. You don't need their gear. So you have a lot more money for auto turrets, which suck in small numbers. But when you have like, 10, 15 of them, they're actually really good against missiles. I put Tychus in S. I also had Tychus in S for all the things he said. Nothing really to deviate. He's a simple commander. He shoots He shoots stuff. The, the stuff goes bye-bye. S tier. Vorazun for me. For missiles, he has Corsairs. For go nuclear, he can just run out or, or blink out using his Dark Templar. It will be more expensive because he does have a lot of gas costs that's why he's not s or that that's why she's not s purifier beam again just blink away and the map itself dark pile and recall pretty good 
but you cannot you cannot use the all army hotkey because you need your corsairs on patrol to shoot down the missiles. That's why she's only A, maybe even A star for me. What do you think? I forgot about the dark pilot thing, which is saving half the trip. So that's pretty <laughs> useful. Um, I guess you just teleport some SUVs. You save half the trip. Uh, I would only recommend your... dark pylon if you if you have like three crystals cr clumped in the same spot. If it's like different spots, it's probably not worth using three separate dark pylons for that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you 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 should try to bring your workers manually first, and when time is like short, you feel like the lava's coming, then you use the teleport. Oh, you don't need to feel like oh, no. the lava's coming because Donnie Vermillion is reporting on duty. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, also, because his, uh, her army is cloaked, even if you get nuked, you're not dead. You still have another life. That's so, true. Yeah, A is good. Okay. Vorzun A. She has one prestige, Keeper of Shadows. Zagara, where do we have him? Zagara, Zagara so uh, she's very, very bad. Worse than Artanis against Missile Command. So Artanis at least has Archons for hit scan, and you can storm the PDDs. Zagara's only real answer to nukes is bio launchers, and they're hard to aim. And yes. they might be bleeding from previous missiles. Yes. So you need like you need like six bio launchers to try to shoot like one missile, one nuke, and sometimes you'll still miss. Sometimes you'll still so miss. So it's really hard to aim. That takes your attention away from the 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 battlefield. If if that's uh, yeah, so that requires that means your attention is divided. P3 allows you to clear more easily, which is good. That's about it. Reinforcing your, um, like, if you're fighting outside of the natural area, away from the natural, then reinforcing is kind of hard because some stuff might get nuked along the way and your army won't be as big as it should be. So, yeah. The uh, PFRB may also be annoying. That, that, that too. And she doesn't have a good way to bring workers across, although she does have overlords plus uh, drop. So that's okay. I put her in D. Actually, I have her in B. Again, uh, I probably should have waited a bit. Uh, I should have waited go nuclear a bit more. But it's just one point for me. Or no, go, missile command. I should have waited a bit more. It's one point for me. I think she's fine against the map. She can just use her usual stuff to defend. And she can just... I don't know. I thought I think he trades just quote unquote trades just five against nuclear going nuclear. My, I might be wrong. I'm probably wrong, but I didn't take away a point. Maybe I should though. I did. I didn't take away. Uh, I didn't take away a point for that. But if I were to take away a point for that, she would still be C, not D, because I think she, I think she's fine uh, against the map itself. Uh, hmm. Is she closer to Dhaka or Artanis? She has like very close. To her. She has one answer to nukes. Scourge don't work because they'll go after random missiles. So if you can't use bio launchers, you're gonna get nuked. So if you get nuked once, your your Zagara's heavily rely on her economy. If you get nuked, you lose all your drones. You're pretty much dead. Well, that's not what so... I was referring to. I, I was actually asking because I, I didn't give her any points. I took away, I took away a point on the missile command, but I only I, I didn't took I didn't take a point away for the map itself. I would give her negative points for missile command for missile. <laughs> that, At least that would, has an answer. That would put her in D. <laughs> she gets a point, but she gets a negative point elsewhere. That like, would put her in D. <laughs> like the other commanders, they have stuff that's like. Decently reliable. Even Artanis storms are pretty reliable against nukes. You just need to pay attention. Whereas, even if you see the nuke coming, if you the bio launcher doesn't always like you can't see the hitbox of the nuke. So if you miss just by a little, you're not going to hit it, and then you're going to get nuked, which is what happened to me in our game. <laughs> Imagine getting. I, mean, I, I hit like I hit every other one except the last one. But like you have to be experienced with bio launchers. And you need two different hotkeys. I guess you might need two different hotkeys because of you need you need them at the natural and at the main. And you you have to hope that they're still alive mm -hmm. because they haven't been killed by splitter missiles and other stuff. And I guess so, at the very least, Artanis' garden shell 
if you don't use the third prestige. So you can save your entire mineral line once. You can save your allies army once. So I guess that is at least something that Artanis does that Zagar does not. Okay, fine. Let's let's put Zagar in D. Zerto, cannon's good. Monolith's good. Zerto good. S. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. You you don't need an army. You your shield guards. Artifact cage. Yeah, shield yeah. guards. Shield guards are pretty good against nukes. Yeah. They are good against nukes. They are very good against nukes. So S tier. Yep. All right. Do we have a double S? No, you still have to work. Like, going nuclear on this map is very annoying. Yeah, no one's transcendently good on this map, or this mutation. So who's top of S? I would say... Uh, Zeratol. Uh, Zeratol. I'm Zeratol slightly... Trinkist. I'm slightly leaning toward Karax because of the, the unity barrier. It's huge. Okay. <laughs> you, you, uh, mm, well, you have to pay less I, attention I, to I'm everything. Towards Tychus, I'm leaning towards Tychus or Zerato because they have hero units and their hero units help clear. That's and true. they like you don't need extra resources just to clear enemies next to crystals. No, Sorrel is pretty good and, though. Yeah, I, I I think Tychus is actually better than Zerato just because like. If Tychus gets hit by nuke, he's not dead. He can get hit once, <laughs> and he's still fine. He gets hit by nuke, he's like, ow, my face! <laughs> he's alive to tell the story. I got hit by a literal nuke. <laughs> and I lived. He's like Indiana Jones. <laughs> His suit of armor is an actual refrigerator. <laughs> I just know for certain Swan is at the bottom of S. All right, that's uh, that's fair. Swan could be at the bottom. Uh, you want Tychus at the top? I think it's Tychus, Zeratol, Karax, Swan. That's my four. N my top is Karax, and then pretty much the same order as you. I, I, I like I like the helping ally stuff, but again, it's not. I guess it's not that 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 considered here. Who's top of A? Uh. I like Stet Boy because of the Stet Zone. I like Arcturus and Rainer because of Bunkers. Also Stukov. I think not needing to deal with nukes manually is a very big thing, which I put Manx there. Because Manx also has a like halfway trip. He can drop troopers right at the crystals. That's true. I did have I did have Arcturus and S, so I'm okay with Arcturus being top of A. Yeah. Stukov, Next. he does Second not have... Second would be Stetman. Yeah, Stet boy's pretty he good. He also doesn't care if he gets nuked. Well, his Zerglings don't care. Uh, his Zerglings... If Gary gets nuked, he's not dead, though. Ow! He has HP. Super, super Gary has 2,000 HP, so he's not dead. My goodness. So who's third? Third, uh, Nova? Hey, Vorzen can also do the half trip. <laughs> but she's really expensive. Yeah, yeah, she's too expensive. Energy. Nova? You I think Nova? Nova. Nova. I think Rainer. Stukov. Rainer? Oh, uh, I mean, Stukov, Stukov has I bunkers. Guess... Stukov, he also has P1, repair. Yeah. P3. And... One. Diamonds um, are better against going nuclear because they, they they can still fight while dodging, whereas Bio has to not fight to dodge. Also, they're flimsier. Yeah. So Stukov. 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 Rainer Vorzun. Wait, you think Vorz is better than Rainer? I think Vorz is Vorzun's way too expensive. Vorzun doesn't have to care about nukes either. Because Corsairs are good. That's true. Alright, let's put uh, Vorazun then Rainer. Vorazun A tier. Who's top of B? I still think Alarak's better than Alarak. Alarak. 
Um, well, Alarak does have the not have to, having to manually deal with nukes part. Right. Well, with with Abathur, you can kind of do that by patrolling Brulis. You can kind of do that. You just patrol. Wait, you only have three of them. You you patrol them everywhere instead of having them no, push. No. I'd rather have my Brulis push. You can do both, but it's that's like, if manually you really dealing with it then. If you, yeah, if so, that's on you. That's on the player. You have a way to deal with them automatically. You just you can choose not to use it. Like if you push, you can use Leviathans. They're fine. Yeah, I guess three Leviathans kill almost everything. So you just don't push that center base. That that one next to the natural. That base is too strong. But the other bases, you can push them with just three Leviathans. And any other things like Mutas or something are just helpful. Like there is extra help. That's true. Um, so who's top of B? Uh, I think Phoenix can be. Phoenix, Phoenix can be top of B? With the carriers. Okay. Doesn't have to care about nukes. They don't care about nukes. And if his champs get nuked, doesn't care either. Ow! <laughs> they die, but you get more. Or they might not even die. 750 damage against what? Caldalus has like 900 life. No, no. How much life does Caldalus have? I think 700 or something. 700 or something. He might still be alive. But, anyways, Claw. Yeah. So Phoenix, Abathur, Alarak, Kerrigan, Han Horner. Hmm. I personally have. I still, I still, I still think Alarak's slightly better, but it's I guess it's a matter matter of preference. I'm fine. I, I just put Abathur ahead of Alarak. Kerrigan, though. I Above guess. Above Han Horner. No. I'm thinking. Kerrigan... I'm actually thinking Kerrigan might be ahead of. I I, I think Kerrigan would be second, because of Omega Worms. But again, it none, it doesn't really deal with nukes, so I can see I can see why she's below both of Abathur and Alarak. Okay, so who's better between Artanis and Zagara? Artanis. You think Artanis is better? I had a miserable time with Artanis. Like it, it, he wasn't doing anything. We should <laughs> switch, and you try it. I feel like I feel like I was just throwing. I was, I feel like I was just throwing Zealous to the meat grinder, and they would just keep dying and not actually do anything. My goodness, that was an awful time. We didn't get nuke because I shot like seven nukes with bio launchers. They destroyed. They destroyed nothing. My Zealous didn't do anything. They, did, they didn't nuke you, right? They didn't. You didn't get nuked by the missile command, right? No, I didn't. Yeah, I think you destroyed most of them. I destroyed all of them. <laughs> no, except you... the last one that hit me. Like I said, you did destroy all of them. You destroyed most of them. Except that one that hit. Yeah, so I say we should we should switch <laughs> and then you'll see which one's worse. How about how about I just take your word for it? Because I do not want to play that mutation with those commanders. <laughs> especially with them paired with each other. <laughs> Alright, fine, let's have let's have uh uh, Artanis over Zagara because I'm too tired to debate. Okay, they're both D anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, guys, watch Tutu's channel, I will link it down below. I'll see you guys next time.